Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, how to compute or calculate multiple dose regimens uh, in case of IV bolus and intermittent intravenous infusions. So we will discuss the principle of drug accumulation and drug accumulation T half. We will practice how to calculate Cmax and Cmin after multiple IV bolus and intermittent uh, IV infusion. After multiple IV bolus and intermittent IV infusion dosing of drugs. And we will also see how to calculate pharmacokinetic parameters uh, and how to uh, Calculate and adjust Cmax and Cmin in case of doses giving uh, given uh, too early, too late, or totally missed following multiple IV dosing. So first we talk about the principle of drug accumulation with multiple doses. And in this case, we usually have two scenarios. One of them that the duration between the two doses is very long. That is enough for each dose to be eliminated completely, as you see in this graph. So you can see in this graph that this is the uh, shape for the curve for IV bolus administration. You have Cmax at time zero, the time of administration. Uh, and then the second Cmax is at We can see the second C max, it is at what time? C max here at 36 hours it means the dosage interval between the two drugs is 36 hours, right? So, as you see here, from the first dose, the concentration of drug or the drug levels already reached almost to zero. So, what do we what do you see in this case? If you look at C max for both doses, it is equal right same level 25 so in this case we cannot say that there is any drug accumulation because you are giving a dose after the first dose has completely been eliminated so it will reproduce again the same drug levels so there is no accumulation accumulation means you have increasing levels of drugs isn't it okay So, the other scenario is no, we don't give at a long period enough to eliminate the previous dose, but we give at shorter intervals. So, if repetitive dosing, IV bolus dosing occur, where the dosage interval is not long enough for complete elimination of each other, what will happen here? The accumulation will occur. Okay? So, if you see here, how much the first Cmax from the first dose? It was 4 mg per liter. Okay. How much is the dosage interval? As you see, for IV bolus, the time we give the second dose is the Cmax. The time we give the third dose is giving the Cmax. The time we give the th fourth dose is giving the Cmax. So the time we give almost at every six hours. So here the dosage interval is six hours. We give at zero time, then after six hours, then six hours again at 12, 18, and 24, and so on. Okay? So now if, if you notice or look at the first dose, what will happen? What happened? It increased the level from, from zero. Increased by how much? By four. Became four milligram per liter. 
If you give the same dose, expect that it will increase the level by the same amount. But every dose will build up upon the previous one. So the previous one here, the semen was 2. 2 plus 4 will give you a level of 6 milligram per liter. Okay, now at the end of the dosage interval, 6 hours, how much the level? The level was 3. So add 4 again, so you will find that the level is 7. At the end of the dosage interval, the level was 3.5. Add another 4, it will build up upon it. It will reach to 7.5 milligram per liter. So what's going on here that the first dose Cmax was 4. With the second dose, Cmax was 6. The th third dose, Cmax is more, 7. And then 7.5, and so on. Okay? This will not happen. Uh, the increase will not continue without end. If you notice here, 4, first time increased by 2, become 6. The second time, with the second dose, increase only by 1, become 7. With the third dose, increase up till only how much? 7.5, so increase only by 0.5. If you notice the trend, that the levels are increasing by smaller and smaller amounts. Here also for the CMN, from 2 to 3, from 3 to 3.5. At the beginning it was 0, right? 0 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 3.5. So the increase will decrease, decrease, till it will become 0. Once the increase becomes 0, what will happen? We reach to uh, stability in the levels in CMAX and CMEN. We call it steady state. Okay. One of the th methods to calculate the drug levels is what we call it the superposition principle. If we follow the superposition principle, this is superposition means that the sum of the concentrations means the concentration at any time in the plasma is the sum of concentrations resulting from all the doses. So superposition means that the CP at any time is equal to the sum of CPs from all the doses. Okay, so if we follow just the rule for calculation of concentration from certain IV bolus dose, what is the rule? As we know, CP at any time equal to equal to how much? C max or CP node. In case of IV bolus, C max is CP node, right? Times the exponent of negative k and here we can write times time right so we just follow this one and then we don't in here we don't we are calculating the concentrations of from each dose separately so cp node is always the same so if we just apply this one to a certain dose if we know the dose if we know the dose and volume of distribution so your CP node equal to the dose divided by volume of distribution. So how much is it? We just write. For example, certain amount and then we keep, we have a table and then we write the doses. Okay. Uh, then we calculate the levels from dose 1 separately and then we calculate the dose from the levels from those two. Those one start at time zero. Dosage interval, suppose it is here in this table, four hours. So by four hours, there is another dose will start. By uh, eight hours, the third dose will start here. By four hours, another dose will start and so on. If you want to calculate the drug plasma levels at any time, it should be the sum of all these levels. For example, if you want to calculate the uh, drug 
concentration at hours then you have to sum these levels if you want to calculate the plasma concentration at 16 hours then it is the total of the level remaining from those one plus the level remaining from those two plus the level remaining from those three four five and so on okay same if you want to calculate the level of drug at 22 hours from administration of the first dose then it will be equal to the sum of all the levels from all the doses up till this time okay this is the superposition principle so what what will happen we said drug will accumulate if you are taking intermittent dosing and then uh, so drug is administered intermittently at a fixed dose and the fixed dosage interval shorter than the time required to completely eliminate the previous drug then what will happen the levels will keep increasing then we said the increase at each dosage interval is smaller than the increase from the previous one so that's why the curve is not linear doesn't go straight because you don't add up the same amount so you get with an average curve like this okay and then what will happen at the end it will plateau it will plateau so depends on the dosage or uh, depends on the route of administration and dosing method so for example if you are giving intravenous infusion you will get a curve like this this dotted one okay intravenous infusion as we discussed before the concentration is going to increase increase till reaching a stable concentration we call it steady state concentration so once the levels become stable then it is a steady state okay then uh, this is an example of oral multiple oral administration the dashed line so you will have a cmax and semen that are always increasing till steady state here we don't have one drug level we have several drug levels we have a range of drug levels from cmax up till semen but here there will be a repetition or equality in the drugs drug levels at the same time means once we reach steady state, CMAX will be stable, semen will be stable, all the levels between CMAX and semen will become stable. Okay, so with plasma concentrations will fluctuate between CMAX and semen during each dosage interval. If you are giving by intermittent dosing, not continuous dosing like IV infusion, IV infusion you get a curve like this. But if it is intermittent dosing means he will take a certain dose every uh, certain number of hours, like for example 50 milligram every six hours then or 100 milligram every six hours then uh, there will be fluctuation in concentrations in the dosage interval you'll always have c max and have semen you'll always have c max and semen so what will happen in this case when you have a c max and semen both will keep increasing the levels between c max and semen which we call them random levels also keep increasing but the increase each time will be less than pre before till we will have a plateau okay this plateau so drug concentrations will plateau at a steady state obtained uh, and steady state is obtained when we reach this plateau we, we say that the drug reach a steady state steady means stable okay so this is a, a state of stability of the levels of the drug concentrations and it will remain unchanged from dose to dose okay uh, steady state concentration if you notice here is also larger than all the levels before steady state concentrations are larger than the levels from the doses before reaching steady state so this is what happens with accumulation okay if we want to explain this one in your mind why every time the decrease in levels is less than previously so we go back to the uh, first order elimination okay we said that we are discussing now about one compartment open model and we said in one compartment open model for in linear pharmacokinetics the elimination is first order and we said the first order explanation is that means that the higher the drug amount of drug in the body and the higher the drug concentrations the higher the elimination rate right 
So what happens here is that your drug levels increase, the drug el elimination also increase, the rate of elimination also increase with the increase in the amount of drug in the body and the in increase in uh, drug levels. So they will keep, so every time the increase will be less because there is a higher rate of elimination. So here when it comes to rate of elimination, also increasing. So the rate of elimination will be also increasing. So the rate of elimination will be also increasing till it will become will become fixed. Okay. Why it will become fixed later on? Why it will not increase? In this plateau, the rate of elimination will be equal to the late rate of dosing. Okay, so means the amount eliminated in a in certain time interval will be equal to the dose given in this dosage interval. Uh, will be equal to the dose given in this dosage interval. So once they become equal, then will no will be no more increase in the blood in the drug levels in the uh, in the blood or plasma. Okay. So steady state means the rate of elimination became equal to the rate of administration of the drug. Rate of elimination equal to the dose divided by divided by tau. Tau means the dosage interval. So the dose divided by tau is the dosing rate will be equal to elimination rate. Dose is fixed, elimination is the increasing. So once the value of elimination rate become equal to the dosing rate, then we will reach a steady state and concentrations will be stable. So stable doesn't mean that we have one level, but we have fixed range when we come, when we talk about intermittent dosing. So Cmax will be stable, semen will be stable. All the drug levels between them will be almost stable. So if you measure Cmax after steady state after uh, maybe steady state achieved for say for example after fifth dose so after the sixth dose seven dose the eighth dose the twelfth dose cmax will be all the same siemens also will be the same okay so we want now to start with the equations and see how to calculate cmax and semen after multiple iv bolus injections before steady state and then we will discuss the equation after steady state Okay, so the first equation, how to calculate Cmax, Cmax after a number of doses will be equal to the dose divided by Vd. This is equal to the initial Cmax, right? This will be equal to the initial Cmax divided by this fraction, 1 minus exponent of n k tau divided by also VD multiplied by the same fraction but without N, without the number of doses exponent of K times tau. So how to calculate Cmax, Cmen? Cmen will be the same equation. We're talking about linear pharmacokinetics, same concept. Cmen equal to Cmax times exponent of negative K and the time between them. And then IV bolus, the time between them is tau, right? So this is the equation for Cmax, right? And then same. And then you multiply by elimination fraction. The elimination fraction E negative K times time. And as we know the time between Cmax and Cmen, here you have Cmax, Cmen, and here you have Cmax, the time between Cmen and Cmax is the dosage interval, tau, okay? Cmax from the second dose and Cmen from the second dose. The time between them is the same dosage interval, tau, okay? So, it depends if you have previous, okay, I ask you to calculate Cmax and Cmen. You calculated Cmax first, okay? then you don't need to write equation again. Then simply you can write that uh, Cmen equal to Cmax times. You can use the equation Cmen equal to Cmax times the elimination fraction. The 
happens the elimination fraction okay but if you are just calculating uh, semen only then you can write the full equation in order to be able to calculate it okay okay then if we want to calculate a random level we call it random level means any level during the dosage interval say for example CP uh, at two hours after the first dose uh, CP at four hours after the second dose CP at uh, three hours after the third the third dose after the third dose okay so here dose one dose two dose three dose four okay calculate for me the level two hours after the fourth dose then this is the level you can say C uh, P two hour fourth dose right four dose so how to calculate this one we use this equation that the concentration after any number of doses equal to same this level this c max okay we are following the same rule that is cp2 equal to cp1 times the elimination fraction exponent of negative k time okay so you use the same equation for c max use the same equation for c max this is our cp1 and then in the elimination fraction we use t small here not tau this is the time between the c max and the random level that we want to estimate so always c max at time zero and then so if we say four hours after the dose then it is four hours after c max if we say two hours after the dose it is four hours after c max and so on okay so and here is the number of doses let's practice to make it clear uh, for example in this problem a patient is started on a drug at an iv bolus dose of 15 milligram every 12 hours calculate the drug concentration two hours after first dose four hours after second dose six hours after the third dose so here you can write that what you have is that dose equal to 15 milligram and then tau is 12 hour number of doses how much here in the second dose uh, sorry first dose second and third and the levels we want to estimate are two hours after the first dose six uh, four hours after the second dose and six hours after the third dose so is this c max c min or random this should be a random level because it is in between the dosage interval is 12 hours it didn't request from us c max or uh, semen and 12 hours 4 hours and 6 hours definitely smaller or shorter than the dosage interval that is 12 hours so we are talking about random levels so here we use the uh, equation for random levels okay of course here they will say assume a uh, you, they will give you the value of we will give you in the problem the value of the pharmacokinetic parameters so assume a one compartment linear model applies to this drug so that we can use this equation for a one compartment linear model uh, half-life and VD are given in the equation we don't have half-life in the equation we have we have K but in this linear for kinetics one compartment open model can we calculate the K from half-life we can so half-life is given to be 2.9 hours and 0.43 uh, volume distribution 0.43 liter per kg okay take care here 
volume distribution is given in liter per kg, not the total volume of distribution. So if you want to use volume distribution in the equation, we have to calculate for the whole body. So we have to multiply by the body weight. So now two things we need to calculate first before we use the equation. We need first to calculate the K and then we calculate volume of distribution or any of them first, no problem. Just we need to calculate before using the equation. So volume distribution will be equal to the total body weight multiplied by the volume distribution in liter per kg. So volume distribution, total volume distribution is this amount, 45.75 liters. Then we calculate K from the equation 0.693 divided by T half. So K equal to 0.693 divided by T half. So equal to, and the T half given the problem is 2.9 hours, so equal to 0.239. Now we have the pharmacokinetic parameters that you can use in the equation, so straightforward to apply. The equation for random level is the C max times the elimination fraction. And we just substitute, those is 15, VD is 45.75, N depends on the problem after first dose, then N equal to 1. After second dose, N equal to 2. After third dose, N equal to 3. Tau is the dosage interval, always 12. Right? And then here we'll defer the time. 2 hours after first dose, then if N1, then we substitute with uh, 2. 4 hours after second dose, so N will be 2, here will be 4. Six hours after the third dose, then N will be, number of doses, three, and then the uh, time will be six hours. So just substitute, substitute. You can calculate the third one. Here, you calculate two values, you get the third yourself. So two hours after first dose, then N equal to one, and then... Um, And um, the number of doses is one. Just I want you to notice something here. That if you are talking about first dose, you can use the simple equation that we used before. The simple equation that we used before for calculation of IV bonus dose is that C random equal to C max times elimination fraction. And C max is equal to dose divided by volume of distribution because once n equal to 1 as you see here then this fraction between brackets is equal to this fraction you can omit them together so to remain the simple equation that we have before dose divided by vd uh, uh, for c max and then multiplied by the elimination fraction and the time is the time between the dose which is at the time of c max also at the same time in case of iv bolus the time of c max is the time of the dose so, and then uh, you calculate with this simple equation. But then if you have more than one dose, then you need to calculate, use the whole, to calculate using the whole equation. You cannot omit this, because the value here differs for the numerator and, uh, for the numerator and denominator. The values are different, because there is n now that is more than one. Okay, so if you want to calculate the, the one that for th six hours after third dose, then your equation will be simply uh, CP will be equal to, if we talk about 6 hours, third dose, then will be equal to dose divided by VD, minus 1 negative minus exponent of negative N, K tau. N here will be 3. And then, Time will be equal to how much? Six hours. Okay? Then you calculate the amount. Okay. <clears throat> then will be another question. In clinical practice, once we want to design a dosage regimen to achieve certain levels, do we calculate based on Cmax and Cmin after the first, second, third dose or at steady state? Okay? Will be a logical uh, question. C max, C man, whatever. When we calculate the dose to achieve certain C max and C man after uh, 
number of doses or at steady state. As you see here in this shape, what's going on? The levels are always increasing up till we reach a steady state. And then we will maintain the patient on a dose that will maintain certain steady state levels. So if you plan to give a dose that will achieve certain concentrations here, then definitely once steady state achieved, the concentrations will be higher, right? So no, the ultimate goal for designing the dosage regimen is to compute using the target steady state concentration. If short life is short, if half life, half life is short and the steady state can be achieved quickly, then we just give the dose and then after maybe second, third dose or something, then by the next day maximum, then the concentrations will plateau and will be, will be stable as a steady state concentrations. If your drug has long half-life, you will not wait for long to achieve steady state concentrations, then you can give a loading dose and then give the maintenance dose, as we discussed before in the uh, uh, lecture of intravenous infusion. Okay? So why this? Because there is correlation between concentration and effect. You always design your <coughs> levels, concentrations, both Cmax and Cmen, to be between minimum uh, toxic concentration and minimum toxic concentration and minimum effective concentration. Okay? So uh, you need your semen, you need your semen to be in this region here. And you, re you need your Cmax to be below MTC. So Cmax should be less than MTC. Semen, you need it larger than MEC. Why, do, why this, is this is the target? Because in this way, if you keep uh, the levels fluctuating between MTC and MEC, then you will have efficacy. The drug will be effective, but at the same time will not be will not be toxic. The drug will be effective, but will not be toxic. Okay? <clears throat> so in case of IV administration, accumulation T half, how about accumulation T half? It is same as elimination T half. What does it mean? It means the drugs will accumulate to reaching steady state after five elimination half-lives. Okay, here, no, no, we are not talking about elimination, but we are talking about accumulation. It is the same. It will take the same uh, as uh, the drug to be completely eliminated. We say it will take about five to seven half lives. And the drug also to accumulate and reach the state, also it will take five to seven uh, elimination half lives. To reach five to seven elimination half lives. Okay? It will take five to seven elimination half lives. So time required to reach 99% of the steady state plasma concentration is 6.6 .6 half lives. Okay, now we want to see how to calculate the steady state. Cmax and Cmen uh, after repetitive IV bolus administration uh, at steady state. Okay, we want to calculate the steady state Cmax and Cmen after repetitive, after repetitive IV bolus dosing. After repetitive IV bolus dosing. So we'll have a simple equation. The principle is, as we mentioned, we said that we are giving certain dose, resulting in certain concentration. The next dose will build up, up upon it, increasing, causing uh, increasing drug levels, causing uh, accumulation of the drug. With the increase in drug levels and increase in the amount of drug in the body, what will happen? Elimination rate also is going to increase, and so on, till the value of elimination rate become equal to the value of the dosing rate. At this time, <clears throat> we will have a steady state. So at steady state, the dose is equal to difference between Dmax and Dmen means difference between amount of drug in the body because we are now moving in a we are moving in a fixed range okay always Cmax 
is the same Siemens also is the same so C max times volume distribution equal to D max C min times volume distribution equal to C min max uh, D min so the amount of drug in the body also is changing by a fixed amount D max is stable becomes stable and C min uh, D min becomes stable also with different dosage intervals once we reach steady state so at steady state those actually is the difference between them okay so you reach to certain D min you give certain dose that will increase the amount of the body into D max and then at the end of dosage interval same amount will be lost eliminated so we reach again to the same D min and then you give another dose it will increase the amount of drug in the body to D max again same value and by the end of dosage interval same amount of drug eliminated because now the rate of elimination is fixed so you reach to the same D min again and so on with different doses so dose is equal to D max minus D min so you can replace <coughs> As we know that the same concept as we say that C min equal to C max times elimination fraction. Okay, multiply them by volume distribution, you will get D min equal to D max times elimination fraction. So now we just substitute. So if you multiply by volume of distribution, we get that uh, d max uh, d min equal to d max multiplied by elimination fraction so we just replace d min by d max times the elimination fraction during a period of time that is equal to tau because the dose the time interval between d max and d min in iv bolus not in iv infusion in iv bolus is equal to tau okay so we can say that those equal to d max times the values between the brackets there is a common factor here d max we take it out and then bracket one negative the elimination fraction one minus the elimination fraction so d max will be equal to the dose divided by this value between brackets this fraction and if we want to calculate the c max then we divide by volume of distribution so c max equal to we divide this side by volume distribution so here and we divide here also by volume of distribution so we get this equation c max d max divided by vd give gives c max equal to those divided by volume distribution times this fraction okay so now we, we know it how to calculate c min same just multiply C max by the elimination fraction and the time between them is tau. Okay, so C min equal to the same same equation, those divided by VD times the one negative minus the elimination fraction, and you divide it by the you multiply by elimination fraction. So same as if you are writing that C min equal to C max times elimination fraction. But here this equation for steady state. So we write comma SS SS here indicates steady state if we just write semen we are talking about uh, a level before steady state if we just specify semen SS means the semen once steady state is achieved so if you want to calculate a random level in the dosage interval between C max and between semen anyway in the middle here then we say CP steady state equal to the equation same as it is and in this fraction we have tau but the elimination fraction will be the time between c max and this level it will be the time between t small here between t small indicate the time between c max and between c max and this level the random level okay let's practice you see an example a drug has been given by multiple iv bolus doses of 100 milligram every 12 hours assume one compartment linear model applies to this drug in this concentration again giving half life and vd uh, but vd is total this time liter not liter per kg then calculate the expected c max and c min values at steady state very simple you just need to have your pharmacokinetic parameters that you need in the equation first the equation is uh, c max equal to those divided by vd times one negative uh, minus 
elimination fraction and the time here is tau okay so we need k tau is given already 12 hours the dose is given volume of distribution is given the missing is tau so first we calculate uh, the missing is k elimination rate constant so first we calculate the k from the half-life so k equal to 0.693 or ln 2 divided by t half so equal to 0.198 okay the t half given in the problem 3.5 hours and always you have to check your units at the beginning okay um, then we just apply in the equation c max equal to and then we substitute d100 volume distribution 31.9 K, the value that we calculated, and then dosage interval as given is 12 hours. Then we have C max. And C max here should be in milligram per liter because the dose in milligram and the volume of distribution in liters. Okay? If you have C max, then C min steady state, C max steady state is 3.46. We just multiply this value by the elimination fraction. So you just say C min simply equal to steady state equal to C max steady state multiplied by the elimination fraction and the time between them is tau. So we substitute C max is 3.46 and then exponent of negative K times tau is 12 hours. So we get C min in milligram per liter. If they want a random level, we just use the same equation from C max, but instead of tau, we will replace with the T small, the time interval between C max and this level okay so additionally if for example I request from you to calculate the concentration three hours after the dose three hours after the dose means also three hours after C max so this CP three hours CPSS steady state equal to C max times exponent of negative K and the time will be three hours. Okay, that's it. So this one omit. Hmm? So and then we substitute for C max three point four six times exponent of negative zero point one nine eight times three, and then. Uh, calculate how many milligram per liter you estimate okay simple okay now actually in in clinical practice the main function is usually not to calculate levels from a certain dose but we have in mind target concentrations we want to achieve and we want to calculate the dosage regimen when we say dosage regimen it includes two terms dose and dosage interval so usually in clinical practice more we need to calculate the dose and dosage interval which together we call them dosage regimen so how to calculate this one you will use the same equation but the known is the c max and the unknown is the dose it is the same thing you need to know for market parameters and also you need to calculate the tau so you can calculate using the same equation the original equation previously was c max equal to dose divided by VD tau, isn't it? So what did we do? We just took, we want to calculate the dose. So everything in the denominator will go in the, si in the other side in the numerator, right? So those will be equal to C max times the denominator. That's the first thing. So how did we calculate the tau? Tau is very simply, we said that C max equal to, oh, sorry, C min So we said that C min equal to C max exponent of K tau. So let's take the we want to calculate the exponent alone. So we say C min You can take the ln first. Ln 
C min equal to ln C max, we get rid of the component of the exponent negative minus k tau, right? And then k tau will be equal to ln C max minus ln C min. In other words, equal to ln C max divided by C min. Right? Ln C max minus ln C min equal to ln C max divided by C min. And then you want to calculate tau alone, so K will go to the other side in the denominator. So divided by K. This is how this equation was derived. Okay? So in this problem, this is so this is another transformation of the previous equation just to to get how to calculate tau directly and how to calculate the dose how to apply simply you substitute but here the unknown is the dose and the tau and then you get in your mind that you have target concentration target value for cmax at steady state and cmin at steady state and again as we said when you design a dosage regimen then you need to um, uh, um, calculate based on the target steady state concentrations, not the levels before steady state achieved. Okay, this is the ultimate target for you. So it depends on the clinical efficacy of the drug, depends on the pharmacodynamics of the drug. Cmax should be before um, uh, below the toxic uh, concentration, and Cmax should be above the minimum effective concentration. Okay, so then and you need to know also the pharmacokinetic parameters of a drug in this patient. So, for example, here, uh, a drug is to be given by multiple IV dose, uh, IV bolus injections. The drug concentration should be maintained between 6 and 1. So, 6 is the Cmax, 1 is Cmin, simply. If I say to you, the drug concentration should be maintained by between two values, then the large value is the highest, the maximum value, Cmax, and the small value is the minimum value, 1. And the concentration will keep fluctuating in this range between 6 and 1, between Cmax and Cmin. Assume one compartment linear model applies volume distribution, you have the value 5.5 liter, and then uh, clearance and volume distribution 5.5 liter per hour and 29.6. Now, in my equation, I don't use clearance, but I use the K. But if I know clearance and volume distribution, why we make life difficult, why you give such problems? Because once you refer to textbooks or references, sometimes you will not get the value of K reported directly. You can find values for clearance in the textbooks and volume distribution. You will not have. So in this case, you should know how to calculate your K. Okay? So we can get K from clearance. You know that clearance equal to KVD. So K equal to clearance divided by VD. So the first thing is calculate K that we need in the equation equal to clearance divided by VD. So 0.186 hours. Then we can second thing calculate the tau because we cannot calculate those first because we have the tau in the equation of the dose. So first we calculate tau, the dosage interval should be uh, calculated using the previous equation, ln C max divided by C min divided by K. So equal to ln 6, you just substitute 6 by 1 by the value of K. We get about 9.6 hours. You cannot exactly give at the same uh, time, same dosage interval. It's not convenient. You have to choose a convenient, um, if you are practicing in the hospital, you have to round this value. You have to round it to a convenient value. So convenient values like every six hours, every eight hours, every nine hours, for example, every 12 hours, every 24 hours, 18 hours, these are convenient values. You cannot say the nurse, uh, the instructions you write in the in your form, therapeutic drug monitoring form, that give, uh, for example, uh, 253.6 milligrams every uh, 6.34 hours. This is impossible to be followed, right? So we have to do some rounding for both the dosage interval and the dose. So if we have tau, then we can straightforward use this equation to calculate the dose. Cmax value is the target, 6 milligram per hour. We just substitute the value of volume distribution, the value of K, the value of tau that we just calculated, the rounded value. Then we will have the final dose. Still, we have to do some rounding to a convenient dose that can be taken. 
or it, it depends here we're talking about IV bolus then depending on the strength of your drug you should choose a dose that uh, then the nurse can be easily can easily take one milligram one ml of the injection uh, or 1.5 multiples of 0.5 for example okay or multiples of 0.2 1.2 maybe can be measured easily by a small syringe so you choose a uh, dose that will give a, a convenient volume that the nurse can withdraw from the syringe but now my dosage interval is rounded, my dose is rounded. So do you expect they will achieve the same Cmax and Cmin? No, they will not achieve the same. So we can do some recalculation to check with this dosage interval and this dose, how much will be Cmax, how much will be Cmin? So we can use the original equation for calculation of Cmax. You find that it is 5.8, so good. It's still in the range between 6 and 1. And Cmin, we calculated from Cmax, multiplied by the elimination fraction. It is 1.09, so it didn't go down. It is still between, between the uh, still the levels is in the range between six and one. So we didn't exceed the C max, and we didn't go below the C min. So this is also a good uh, level to achieve. Now, in your mind, when you when you do the rounding, keep in mind to do opposite rounding. That if you, for example, here reduce the dosage interval. Uh, don't also re incre don't increase the dose, but you do the same. You reduce the dose, okay? Because reducing the dosage interval will make will get the levels up, okay? So you can say same rounding, not opposite direction. So if you round down, you round down the other one. Round down dosage interval, you round down the dose. You round this one up, you round this one up to compensate. Because if you are going to decrease the dosage interval, then the calculated one, the levels will go up. So to compensate this, then we can don't round this one up. It will increase the levels further. You just round the dose down also, so that will compensate. Okay. You can just try different rounding and see the effect. Do it with your, uh, do it at home uh, individually, and then you will see the, how is the effect of rounding. So you will see that you will learn the t the tactic how to quickly. Uh, uh, this decide on the appropriate rounding so that once you do recalculation, your levels will not be uh, far. The last thing we discussed today is the random drug plasma levels after IV bolus once steady state have been achieved. Random is same from Cmax we calculate, but we just add to the equation the elimination fraction. This is the only thing you need to add. Okay, so this is the original equation for calculating Cmax at steady state without this elimination fraction. And then we just multiply this C max by elimination fraction. And time here is not tau, it is T small because it is shorter than the dosage interval. As an example, same example three, calculate the steady state plasma drug levels two hours after administration of the dose. Here they want steady state concentration after the dose by two hours. In IV bolus, C max is at the time of the dose. So the time between this level and C max is also two hours. So if we have, we go back to example three, how much was C max, whatever the level, then we just multiply by the elimination fraction and we use the same values. So in this example three, the previous one, we said that C max is 5.8 milligram per liter from a dose of 140 milligram, right? So you can use the full equation as I, I answered here in the first answer, or you can just multiply this C max by the elimination fraction so the long way is just use the full equation those the 140 milligram divide by volume distribution of this patient and here uh, k times uh, tau the nine hours the rounded one and the elimination fraction that you multiply this c max by is uh, k is the same value and the time between the c max and this level is two hours and then you get the value or you just make life easy you have Cmax value already 5.8, so use the Cp random equal to Cp uh, Cmax SS times elimination fraction, and you substitute the K and the time between them is two hours, you will get the same value, okay? So you can make life easy. So we stop here. This is the, should be enough for today, and then tomorrow we'll continue, inshallah, with the multiple doses and cal calculation of uh, drug levels. Uh, anyone has any questions so far? 
Any questions?